The mining industry has existed for around 20 to 40,000 years, with the first mines appearing in ancient Africa. However, mining really started to take off around 10,000 years ago when civilizations became more sophisticated. Ever since then, humans have been down in the mines mining from the Egyptians to the Romans. Then the industry boomed when coal became useful and mine owners found out kids don't actually have rights. Sadly, once the mine would run out of goods, people would move on and abandon their towns as seen in Appalachia. Today, Australia is one of the world's largest mining producers. A country right next to Australia is New Zealand, Bad Australia. Now New Zealand wanted to compete with Australian mining, so they contracted Ninja Kiwi to help them. Now Ninja Kiwi is famous for making the worst game of all time and ruining my life not industrial mining. However, I am a child and I do know how to ruin my life, so at least I have some experience with mining. What Ninja Kiwi made was unfathomable, unspeakable, and epic. A boss blew in Balloons Monkey City that four people remember. Until now, it's in BTD6 and it has gone postal after listening to Death Grips. So it's my job to throw that thing back into the coal mines where it belongs. Hey chimps, it's me. Auto Wolfgang Ortmeier. The 34.0 update came out 40 years ago, so it's time for me to play it. Now I kind of have an idea as to what they added, because it's been 26 updates since we last got a Churchill skin. And since it is Christmas, Ninja Kiwi should be in the Christmas spirit. <gasps> yes! Yes! New Churchill skin! Oh my god, this is- I fucking hate it. That demotivated me so much that I didn't even fight the boss. I had the game open for a minute. I had to face the truth that this skin is the only Churchill skin we'll get for the next 20 years. And with the support of my good friend MC Ride, I opened up the game. Here we have the Dread Balloon, professional coal miner, and avid enjoyer of Minecraft Ride. It took me three different boss balloons just to realize that this text is completely useless. The boss is basically a giant lead balloon, but when it reaches a skull, it becomes a ceramic, spawns smaller balloons, and is also immune to a certain tower category. Now I'm gonna pick my good friend, Ben Yamin, so we can hack a hole into the ground for the dread balloon to fall into. I feel like I'm doing pretty good. Wait, let's. Huh. Must be round 20 already. Wait, that was 26! 20 has fortified leads! Oh my god! Now, this is the Dread Balloon's main strength, being able to mess my brain within the first 30 rounds. It's like how Death Grips is able to give you a brain tumor within the first 30 seconds of listening to it. Dread Balloon time. You can see here that it is immune to primary towers. I have no idea why Ninja Kiwi thought that it would help it survive in the mines, and I won't even thank them for it. It also has this ceramic shield designed to help it survive explosions like the Mononga mining disaster. On December 6, 1906, Seven, an explosive accident killed 362 out of 400 miners, labeled as one of the worst mining disasters in US history. However, the explosion came from a sticky bomb, which would have not been able to knock off the Dread Balloon's ceramic shield, and might not be able to damage it at all since it could be immune to magic monkeys. But wait, Mononga Mining Disaster, Mining, Mine, Minecraft, MC, MC Ride. We're gonna see how many things relate to the hit rapper MC Ride or the hit band Death Grips. Now I have a sticky bomb to deal with the first two skulls, but once the dread balloon is immune to magic monkeys, I'm boned. Just kidding, Spike Storm is pretty good and we were able to beat the tier 1 boss. One second, I need to find the optimal spot for the monkeyopolis. I found that buying an overclock and using it on a BRF is like having two BRFs. This feature has been in the game for more than two years. I will get a monkey seed to prepare me for a monkeyopolis once I run out of space for fun because Ninja Kiwi thought it would be funny to ruin the monkeyopolis. Tier 2. I am very cheap. A sticky bomb with a spike storm. This is why you buy defense for a boss moon. It's like buying headphones to listen to death scripts, but the headphones won't connect to your phone. It somehow worked like realizing you don't need headphones to listen to a homeless man screaming to a microphone, but you will be judged. And now I have several farms and a banana central. I don't know if I hate this process or love it. It's like how some people don't know if they hate or like death grips. Not me, of course. I hate it. Round 80. I have an avatar of wrath and an idea as to what I will do when the boss is immune to magic monkeys. Halfway through the boss, I remembered that overclocks don't only boost farms, but other towers as well. I knew about this since day one, but forgot all of a sudden for no apparent reason. 
Since the boss is now immune to magic monkeys, I'm going to sell my avatar wrap and buy it mad. Boss is dead. I have a miner who collects balloons. And now I realize that all of my engineer monkeys have safety helmets. This helmet will protect them from any mining incidents, like the Sago Mine disaster, where an explosion in the coal mine killed 12 workers and injured many others. I will link the accident investigation report in the description for you to read. But since my engineer monkeys have helmets, they will survive anything that falls on their heads. Unless they're right next to the bomb, then they are useless suicide bombers. But wait, helmets protect your head from heavy objects falling on it that would cause brain damage. You know what else causes brain damage? Death grips! Now even with my copious amounts of money, I refuse to buy the Engineer Paragon because I need as many tiers in it as possible so I can have an easy time with the tier 5 regular boss. You see guys, I really need those extra tiers on my Engineer Paragon to beat that boss. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time for that. I have no hope of beating the Elite Boss. I will not explain what happened, but instead, speed up the gameplay and play some Death Grips over it. Now here we have a brick balloon. They are way stronger. They can't die! I tried using a jungle druid, but that didn't work at all. Then I used a main moab. I didn't even know I had that much money. It worked because I am alive. So I'm going to get an overclock and start building up more factories for the engineers to work at. I have a real problem with boss events. I'm really bad at making money. I could get good at it if I was able to enslave monkeys because the monkeys only have two real choices, get enslaved by me or the balloons. I have a brain, the balloons don't. However, if they did, my channel would get terminated for mass genocide of ascending species, then I would become homeless. But you know who else is homeless? MC Rai. Tier 2 boss, I'm watching my avatar of wrath struggle with breaking bricks. I thought he was the angriest monkey in the game, but I think the mad is anger because he could break bricks easier. Who would have known that a monkey with anger issues and sharp sticks is weaker than a monkey with two military grade rocket launchers? If I put both of them in the mine, one will break their fist trying to mine stone and the other one will kill everybody in the mine. This reminds me of something like the Soma Mine explosion in Inez, Turkey, where an explosion killed 301 people. I don't think I'm allowed to talk about these tragedies on my YouTube channel, but that's okay. We'll experiment and find out what I'm allowed to say on YouTube. It's similar to how Death Grips experiments with how incomprehensible they can make their lyrics until you start to enjoy the sound of wild bears mating. If you actually understand anything that's being said right now, you are lying. For the tier 3, I think this boss has less health than the other three bosses. Wait. Wait, there's four bosses in this game? I need a new hobby. Because it has less health than the other three bosses, I will get an Avatar of Wrath, Mad, Cripple Mob, Blue Storm, Super Brittle, and a Homeland Defense. Anything more will be considered harassment. Don't want that to happen. Getting accused of harassment by a miner is never good. Now with the boss dead, I will get the ninjas for the Ninja Paragon. And you know what? You know how this works, let's just move on. Normally, this ninja paragon would solo the boss entirely. However, since the boss is sometimes immune to magic monkeys, I will need two paragons of different categories to beat this. The problem here is that I don't have that kind of money to purchase a second paragon. Just kidding, I have more than enough money, and I got a very good tier on my dark paragon. That's a good thing, because I will have to sell it later to get a better tier. I will start to assemble my air force to hunt down the miners. Tier 5, that miner stood no chance against me. I think this boss might be the one where I beat week 3. How sad, the only way I can beat a boss balloon is if it's a miner. Week 2, we're on a map that I actually like, Frozen Over. I picked DJ Ben so he can make music such as Hacker by Death Grips. This will make the boss not have enough brain power to operate anymore, making it very easy for me to win. Here I have a lead to gold, as I've heard that they actually make a lot of money when zebra balloons are replaced with lead balloons, who would have known? Tier 1 boss, I know how to deal with the boss part of the boss, but not its small friends, the brick balloons. If the boss is a miner, then these bricks are literal fetuses. I thought a sniper would do something. It didn't, so I had to shell out over 8k on acidic glue. That's enough to buy at least this many gallons of white glue by Craftsmart TM, or the amount of money you'll need to spend on therapy after listening to Death Grips. Now the boss is immune to magic monkeys, so I will have to sell the sticky bomb by a full auto sniper. 
who's a complete idiot by shooting at unborn miners instead of the big miner. I don't really know how I beat that when my main source of damage doesn't realize that the giant balloon has more health than the tiny brick balloon. While we farm, I will read out some lyrics from the hit band Death Grips. Set it slow, rolled. Anticipation grows slow. I I passed the troll my way. Sugar cane, go go. <laughs> <laughs> All of that was from the first verse of the fever. I love this band so much. Not me, of course. I hate it. Tier 2. We need to get rid of the first skull so we can seize the boss with tax zone and embrittlement. But for some reason, it's not doing any damage. I then remembered that the boss is made of pure lead, and then I got three alchemists to buff one tower. Now at this point, I start to look at my life, at how I'm playing a game with monkeys and miners instead of going outside exercising and talking to women i see nothing wrong with it but i do see something wrong with my farming methods let's say i was fighting the elite boss i would need enough money to afford a dart paragon by selling as little farm as possible right now i can barely even afford the monkeys for the paragon this is an issue that i will not look into and instead fight the tier 3 regular boss that was very simple more farms since I no longer have enough space to fit another farm, I will start to get boat farms. I'm pretty sure they've been nerfed because each boat is only making $800 per round. Either that or I don't know how to properly use them. You can tell here that my defense is so optimally designed to the point where I need to get an emergency legend of the night to deal with leaking balloons. I'm going to use my engineer paragon for the tier 4. However, I am bone when it becomes immune to support towers. After I sold everything, I only had enough money to afford 3 paragons with 900k left over then the video just ended yeah so it turns out i ran out of space because of that time i was pirating death grip songs so i wasn't able to record the ending of the tier 5 boss comment down below if you think i beat it or not if you think i didn't beat it write your favorite death grips lyrics now i also did the elite boss right after the regular boss and since i wasn't able to record anymore well I don't have any elite boss gameplay. Here are some of the things that I was saying while playing with the elite boss. My god, I hate this so much. This game is making me regret dropping out of pre-K. Every day I wake up, I'm always in pain knowing that I have to play BT6. I could benefit society more if I was just sold into the coal mines of Zimbabwe. Even then I'll be useless and be better off dying in one of the weekly mining accidents. So I had to re-record it just for you. It was painful, I wanted to die, and I will skip it because I need to get to week 3. But trust me, I did win as a homeless man. Week 3, I decided to pick Pat Fusty instead of Ben because he wasn't available. But then I thought about my decision, and after 5 minutes of deep processing, I didn't even pick him. I'm going to skip to the tier 1 boss. I did the exact same thing as last time, but once the boss became immune to magic monkeys, I bought two more at Maulers. How sad, I have resorted to launching sharks at children. However, sharks are actually less deadly than mining axes, such as the Yolan. Now instead of being poor by doing my old strat of buying BRFs, I decided to look back at the time when I played with the greatest BT6 player, Dragon. Oh, we're dead. What? Oh yeah, the thing it spits out kill. We actually bought one BRF and many marketplaces. However, I still needed one more marketplace. So I tried to do that with my gameplay. However, if I could do whatever I wanted, I would immediately purchase an emerald mine in a country with little to no laws against child labor, hire a gang of men involved with mafia kidnappings, and post this image onto my YouTube channel. Now we have a workforce of miners who are not miners, so we'll chuck them into the mines and see what happens. If they die, good. Dumb. Tier 2, remember how I got three alchemists to buff the tax zone? Well, this is awkward. It worked, so it did do something. However, it looked really stupid. Now I have a banana central up now in 66, which means I should be on my way to be a millionaire without explaining my audience. Nope, can't afford a dark paragon by the tier 3 boss. That's okay, we don't need it. Future me will need it, and I could care less about future me. I'm going to skip to the end and see if I really did become rich. Um, yeah. See, I could probably afford a bench if I wanted to. But now... As per tradition, the elite week three boss. Everyone I don't like is literally Hitler, literally. Wait, I'm alive? 
I'm not rich, but but I'm alive. This is very confusing, and I do not know how to process it. It might actually be one of the first times I felt happiness. If only I could get that feeling again. But for now, I will take on the week four boss. We do have Ben, which means I might actually be able to make more money by stealing from Myers because they are not intelligent. I think I know why I didn't make that much money for the Elite Week 3 boss, besides not getting another marketplace. I didn't get a flavor trade to sell one farm. It all makes sense now. I'm dead. Wait, dead? Scripts. We are good, and now I have farms, and there's a fortified lab trying to ruin me, but I won't let that happen. Oh my god. It's so close to die. I pressed escape twice. Fuck. I had to restart because I have a very happy trigger finger. I don't like this game. Tier 2. I feel quite rich and I just realized that an elite defender isn't the worst option to beat the boss. However, it does not understand what the term strong targeting means. To make up for his lack of an education, I got a glue gun to deal with the bricks. Speaking of education and glue, if this glue was given to all schools, we would have a higher IQ to prevent this from happening, and nobody would listen to death grips. I think I'm doing quite well when it comes to money, however, my progress will be halted when I have to deal with the tier 3 boss. The only issue I have with balloons is that I don't get any more satisfaction from playing it. I already have 1,300 hours in the game, and I've done everything that is possible without a degree in loneliness. Okay, I am rich, and turns out, I don't don't even need to buy another paragon to deal with the immunity to magic monkeys. All I really need is just a super buff map. This tower is like combining MC Ride's primal strength with anabolic steroids, straight crack, a bag of skills, whatever my dad drinks, and Benadryl. I can now get my military run by miners, and since it hunts miners, that means I employ team killers and I fully support it. You can see here that I had a couple of dollars left over after I beat the tier 5 boss, so now let's battle the elite boss. Tier 1 was quite self-explanatory. No, it's not. After the boss became immune to military monkeys, I bought a Moab Eliminator. This might actually be the first time I've ever used this tower in a boss event, and I'm surprised by the results. Never mind. We are alive and living in a world where a band can sample the sounds of a mine exploding and say it's experimental music. Don't know why I said that, it just felt right. Tier Dose, I got my army of death grip stands to beat a child as it is their specialty. But once it becomes immune to patients of brain damage, we need to call in the military. Oh crap. We're back with a Banana Central round 63. Last time I got one this early, I became rich. So let's go. Tier 3, I have a new strat. Instead of starting with a dark paragon, why not start with the Homeland Defense? And a Madden Afro Rap, and then sell them for a Dart Paragon. My ingenious strategy led me to easily beat the boss, but then I was hit with the sad reality that this is not a farming game. This made me realize that I cannot defend round 85 with $23. I actually sold some of my farms to buy a ninja monkey. It was sad, but I did have to do it. I will get boat farms to make more money, but I won't get the other two tier 5 boats because the boat paragon has been disabled for this event. This is because Ninja Kiwi despises the idea of a cargo industry and prefers a mining industry. Tier 4, I have so much money that I could afford a Ninja Paragon, Air Force, and a Dart Paragon. This is only because I turned off rank mode. That's it. For the tier 5, I realized I haven't bought a Vengeful in a very long time, so I tried to buy one, but it was a couple hundred dollars off. Never mind, sell the engineer Paragon, boom, Vengeful. Let's go. I won! Now even though I feel quite accomplished by beating all four weeks of Dreadbloon, I still have something to finish. A while back, I made a two-part series where I tried to get all of the achievements in BT6. In the final part, I only had one achievement left to get, the Daily Read, unlocked by beating 365 daily challenges. It actually only takes 183 days to get as advanced challenges count. Co-op challenges are out of the question because I have no friends. Ever since that video came out, I grinded towards this goal every day, and this day, has been a long time coming. I am 1% away from getting the achievement, so all I need to do is beat one or two challenges, and we have a co-op challenge just in case I'm desperate enough to talk to my Discord server for one more challenge. I beat the daily challenge with ease with an Apache Prime, still 99%. The advanced challenge involves Open's Brambles. I have no idea how it works, but I will take it and... 
Wait. Yes! Yes! It's there! Oh my god. Oh, it's there. After 10 months of this, I finally have it. All of the achievements in BTD6. Wait, a new update while I'm making this video? Huh, crazy. Let me look it up. Damn it! They added new achievements. Okay, but at least these three look really easy so I can get them quickly. Wait, die. Motherfuck! I need to see if this is actually real. Come on, load the game. Please, please. Yes! Yes! It was fake! Let's go! Ninja Kiwi will have to be responsible for a mass shooting! Yeah!